All right, let's go ahead and get started in the Kodiak. Ignition on, fuel pump on, and low start. NG comes above 14% and reduce low idle. Watch on the NG to make sure it's continuing on past 35 at a good rate. Watch on the ITT now to make sure it's just a continuous coming up and not too fast. And 606. All right, release the start cart. Welcome back to the vault, guys, and welcome back to beautiful Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan, and uh, yeah, we're going out on a flight that I have done many, many times out to Karamui. Uh, when I was flying with MAF a few years ago, I flew out there almost on a daily basis. So anyways, I'm going to take you guys on a low route out there. And like I said, if you guys are um, semi flyers and stuff, um, check out the link below. I'm going to post this so you guys can actually fly this on your home sims from Garok out there. And I think you can actually download this one as well, this airstrip on X-Plane. Anyways, so we've got that off. Let's throw our generator and alternator on and get the air blowers pulling in here. So it is just a 19-minute flight out there when I was with MAF just on loan um, and back in 2016 I flew the GA8, the air van and it used to take 26 minutes so that's 7 minutes faster and it's only it's, it's like, like a 50 nautical mile flight out there, it's not very far at all and put my weight in today I've got 838 kgs of cargo today I have five seats on board as well, so I've got 1,760 pounds that I'll put in my cargo. And we've got 580 pounds of fuel. Put my flight plan in there. We've already got a bunch of these saved. I don't know if we have Karamui though. It does not appear that we do. All right, so it's just 42 nautical miles out there. So not even technically a cross country. Coca Tower, good morning. Afternoon now, November Tango Kilo, request taxi Karamui 1 POV. November Tango Kilo, Guru Tower, I have an intro Ryan, taxi to Rene 1 to left, and turn back track and line up. Wind light in vehicle can H1018, temperature 24. 1018, cleared to back track and line up 17 left. November Tango Kilo, and happy noon rolling. Okay, so. This is my second flight of the day, so I'm not going to do a governor check uh, today. And like I said, I'm going to be taking you guys on, on the short route out there. So basically, we're going to head down to the Asaro South Gap, just at the south side of this valley here. And uh, we're going to just follow the river all the way out to Karamui. So it's a super easy route to get out. We'll go at 6,000 today. Right. Fuel cap set selectors will turn pause off for now. Switches and instruments, we're going to check our weight. We're at 7,000 pounds today. Charlie, all right, much appreciated. Cancel previous, and so we get the right downwind for... 7,000, rotate 62, 74. Right down Officer at 20, trims are set, abort, not 50 knots by the first taxi or second taxiway. Full reverse, heavy braking, flaps up, cut off, pull off, shutter for going off after takeoff at 85, consider EPL, consider feather. Otherwise, cut off, pull off, and shut off, straight ahead, 80, full flaps, November Tango, kill drive, take off. Trim and take off, and uh, that traffic was probably killing Charlie Cohen's like helicopter, past the seven miles uh, through the Coco. And we'll be joining uh, right downwind, landing one zone left, one zone left. Make right turn, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, copy traffic, and I'll be heading out towards the Asaro South today. From the tank kill. As required, come to right turn uh, and part on track. November tank kill. All right, it's 26 degrees, so 25, 5,000, 1380, 1330 for 1380. Ignition condition flaps, 20 fuel and harnesses. All right. 1380, rotate 62. All right, airspeed is alive. There's 62 and rotate. Thanks, uh, 
your separation with the departing Korea and new requirements uh, tracking uh, for one some left uh, behind the departing uh, Korea uh, track director dispersal clear to land. All right, over 85 knots and a positive rate of climb. We'll go 10 degrees of flaps. We'll just continue on straight ahead, our runway heading. We've got a helicopter coming in off of our right for a landing. Over 90 and still climbing. We'll go zero degrees of flaps. Oh, it's probably going to be a little bit bumpy today. It's been just bumpy in this whole valley. So that's another thing that I do consider when I do fly down valleys is just how bumpy is it and what's my comfort level about being really, really low to the ground. And one thing with bump is not that it's going to make it more dangerous, but it just divides your attention to rather than just flying the aircraft and enjoying it, you're focusing on really a lot on what you're doing and keeping wings level and are you descending, are you climbing, you have a lot more sinkers as the winds go over the mountains, there's just going to be a lot more turbulent air, so like I said, we're going out to 6,000, I'm going to bring my prop back to 2,000 RPM and ITT, actually we're nearly at 6,000 now, so I'm just going to start bringing my torque back to my cruise. Stroke Tower November, Tango Kilo, departed time 5-3, tracking Leo Soro south, and then initially, and then 228 on climb 6000, Karamui 13 next hour. From 10 Kilo, 6000, contact Meringue on 6538 in the Soro South Gap. 6538 Soro South, November, Tango Kilo. All right, we'll take our landing lights off, our engine inlet back to normal, and our igniters are turned off. And we'll flip the autopilot back off. So many times, many times when I had to do this flight years ago, uh, we don't really fly out there very often because we don't have any missionaries. We just fly commercial goods in and out of there. So I'm just taking a load of cargo out there right now, picking up five people and coming back with some peanuts as well as some coffee today and that helps subsidize our cost for the missionaries that we do fly. It helps keep the cost down to the airplane. So anyways, I flew this route, like I said, many, many, many times, and I had to fly this lower route many times too because a lot of times in the morning, the clouds would just sit right around 7,000 feet, but you can safely get all the way out there at 6,000 feet. So anyways, this is probably one of the prettiest valleys that I've flown through here in Papua New Guinea. I mean, every valley is pretty awesome looking, but 500. this one I really, really do enjoy because there's waterfalls coming out both sides of the, of the valley, and you can follow it all the way up to Chimbu, which is probably another 20 miles of flying or so, at least 20 miles of flying, maybe even 30, but yeah, just waterfalls on both sides, hundreds of feet. It's just incredible. But we got some cliffs up here coming around the corner and some just, yeah, massive waterfalls. It's really, really beautiful. Call it Madang, now I'm in Soto South. Madang 6538 November Tango Kilo Tax, or correction, the transfer? <laughs> Can't even remember what I'm supposed to say. November Tango Kilo in the south of Saro for Karamui, estimating Karamui 13. 1011. 1011, November Tango Kilo. Alright, so just around this corner right here on the right side, there's a really, really cool waterfall. I'll see if I can position the plane so you guys can see that. We're going past a couple here on the right and the left. There's one right over there. Actually, I don't think you're going to be able to see this next waterfall because basically you can kind of see the big, huge shelf of ground has like just collapsed and the waterfalls are just on the other side of that. But this whole area right here has a lot of like ground shifting and like big, huge shelves have just kind of fallen off. Mount Elambari is just straight ahead of us, which is also a huge cliff. and. We were thinking that there might be, um, at one time, more volcanic kind of pushing up underneath that, but just because this massive shelf, so probably 800 or more feet, just straight down, um, has come up and, I don't know, it's been there for obviously for a long time, but anyways, um, yeah, we don't, we don't have a lot of cliffs around here, at least not like that. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly this river and then it will join another river just over top of these next mountains. And we'll take a left there and take that river all the way more down towards the south, southwest towards Karamui. I don't know if you can see up there, there's some houses right on the edge of these massive drop-offs. I bet you they're probably a couple thousand feet from the tops all the way down, down to the river at the very bottom. And these cliffs right up here on our straight ahead, there's some houses just way out right on the very edge. Just the most incredible, incredible view. Views that people will be paying millions for. And uh, these guys get that view every single morning. Here's where the junction of the two rivers is. One comes up this valley here, one goes out here. They kind of connect together and then head out this way together. So we've got 24 minutes or 24 miles to go, just 10 minutes out. So really, it's a really, really short flight. But if some of you guys are wondering why I was on loan with MAF and I flew with them for a little bit, it was because before our mission got these airplanes, the Kodiak, um, MAF was short-handed on pilots, but they had a lot of airplanes and they had check-in training pilots at the time where we didn't have our Kodiaks. We still had the Cessna 206, but we were phasing out of it. We didn't have any check-in training pilots in country that were able to uh, check myself and one other guy out. So we went on loan for a year with MAF. I flew the GA-8, uh, the air van, and my section that I flew, we fly region, was this region. So you know, maybe a hundred square miles kind of out this way to like the south of Garoka was my section and I don't know how many I had, probably uh, 15, 15 to 20, probably 20 runways that I would maybe, 15 to 20 runways that I would go to consistently. And that's all I would do is that section. It was all just commercial work. And uh, yeah, so like I said, I flew this route so many times and Karamubi was probably the staple of, of my week, weekly flights. This is really nice though, a couple of years ago, like I said, when I was flying this area, tons and tons of these trees uh, were sick. I don't know if they had a bug or something that was killing them, but I mean, probably, I don't know, a quarter of the trees were all brown in this valley. So it's good to see that they're recovering and doing well this year for sure. So one of my closest calls ever of actually smacking the ground and ripping my gear off was down this little valley right here. At a place called Guasa. It was when I was still flying the air van and the air van was a turbocharged plane, but it would take like seven seconds. If you went to idle and then you went to full power, it takes seven seconds for the turbo to spool up. It was super slow and super, super laggy. But anyways, anytime after 11 a.m., the winds shift and they kind of go over the mountain and then you have downdrafts, pretty severe downdrafts after your committal. So what I mean by committal is from this point on, there's not enough room in the valley to actually go around and do a 180. So you have to land no matter what. And one time I had a huge downdraft and it just followed right by a huge updraft. So went down, went up, I went fully to idle because I was, and I had to slip it in. And then all of a sudden I had an immediate downdraft again and full power again across the numbers, full power. And I was probably maybe six feet off the end. And so the end is like a huge, just sheer drop off. So yeah, definitely. I call those ones leg shakers because the adrenaline is pumping so much you can't even stop your legs from shaking and stuff. That was probably my scariest, scariest landing about four years ago. All right, we are 12 miles out. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up our strip chart for Karamui. All right, so the elevation is 3,460. So I'm gonna set my elevation here at, what did I say? 34, so it's gonna be 44.50. So 40, let's just do 4,400. Actually, let's do 4,500. 4,500, we'll be landing on runway one, two. The length is 800 meters, so super long, 2% slope. And nothing very special about this place. Um, you now, the only thing special about this place is there's a lot of tailwinds on takeoff in the afternoon, and it's already one o'clock now. So there's a good chance we'll have tailwinds which will mean that I'll have to reduce my weight getting out of there. 
potentially significantly, because sometimes they'll have 12 to 15 knot tailwinds. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my V-Ref now. Keep my eyes actually out for a second. I'll go ahead and make a call. All stations care movie, 120 decimal one, Kodiak November, Tango, Kilo, one zero miles to the northeast. Circuit time. What time am I getting there? 500. Circuit time, one two. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start our checklist. Selectors and brakes are good. Taws is turned off. Our V-Ref. 6,900 pounds. The V-Ref is going to be 73. Our lights and inlet are done. On this one, you can pretty much go left or right, so short final, if we do need to go around, is power up 20 degrees. We'll do a right-hand turn out. Reset our torque for 740 ITT. Pop and harness will get here shortly. And another thing we can do is set up our minimum Oops, up to our barrow at, said 3460, so 3960. And what that's going to do is 3960. It's just kind of basically, Betty's gonna call out minimums right when we hit that, and we know we're 500 feet over the threshold at that point, which is really, really handy. This one, the ground and everything is pretty much the same elevation as the end of the runway, but there's some that are kind of just stuck on the side of a mountain and it's just a 2,000 foot or 1,500 foot below you to the bottom of the valley. So turning 500 could throw your you know visual cues all off and it's really nice to have her remind you that you're at your minimum so that you're not dropping down too low and then turning your final too low. So we're landing on runway 12, so we're close now. I'm going to go set my OBS up as runway 12. Up in harness, we'll get here shortly. We're five miles out. Call up SAR here in just a second. Up in harness, we have left to go and we have flaps to go. What I'm going to do is just fly, enter into a left downwind, and then go around that way. I don't necessarily need to fly top, like directly over top of it, but it'll let them know that I'm here. I've had it once where they're mowing the grass and they didn't see me coming in because I didn't do that and had to go around because he didn't see me mo when he was mowing. So anyways, it's always good to check out your runways, even if they are push locations. Make sure that no one's out here walking on it. There's a fence around it, but maybe mowing it or whatever else. Check for dogs and stuff. All right, we're going to go ahead and descend down to 4,500, which is our pattern altitude. And now that we're in the circuit, I'm going to go call up Medang. Medang 6538 November, Tango, Kilo, in the circuit, Karamui, cancel SAR. Shut off board and reduce to about 800. Medang 6538 November, Tango, Kilo, in the circuit, Karamui, cancel SAR. Station's care movie, 120 decimal one, November Tango Kilo is in the circuit. We'll be entering into a left down run. All stations care movie. All right, so I'm gonna go basically the other runway and then cut back at a 45 to enter back into my downwind. We want 4460. All right, prop and harness are done. Flaps to go. We're below 138 first degrees the flaps. All right, I don't see anything on the runway. Runway anyway, looks good, maybe a little bit wet or kind of muddy at the end. All right, we're now beam the numbers. We'll go 20 degrees of flaps and reduce our torque down to around 400 foot pound of torque and push the nose over as we get that 20 degrees of flap in. As you put flaps in, the nose is going to want to go up. All right, we are turning final at 3960. So 42. 
Direction 4160 is where we want to turn our base. Seventy-three, eighty-three on base, and ninety-three on downwind. We're looking for forty-one, sixty. We got my twenty degrees, and usually around one point six on our distance is where we're going to turn. I'm already a hundred foot high, so I'm just going to continue my quicker descent. Turning final thirty-nine, sixty. Going to eighty-three. I reduce the power and also pull back just a tiny bit. Just because we're pitching for air speed, power for altitude. Full flaps, checklist complete. Turning final, 50 feet high. Minimums, minimums. There's my minimums. And we want 73. We've got one out on the head, on the nose. So again, I'm pitching from airspeed and power for my altitude. All right, we have three knots of quartering tailwind, which is great because that means takeoff will be easier. I won't have to reduce my load. All right, we are now committed to land. Stay off to the left just a tiny bit. Keep my nose above all this crap. Man, that was kind of bumpy. Out of these ruts. Anyways, guys, this is Karamui here. Hope you guys enjoyed that flight. Uh, if you guys would like to fly the same one, I'll put it on my Patreon page down below. You guys can fly it on your home sim. Give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy this flight, though. It definitely helps my channel grow. And uh, please leave a comment down below on uh, how you think I might be able to make this channel better for you guys because really I make these for you. I don't watch these myself. So hope you enjoy it and uh, thanks again for taking the time to watch. Have a good one.